All right, I want to take a few minutes here to answer some letters that have come into the ministry. Um, as far as names are concerned, I'm not going to share the names, but I will share the initials just so you know who you are. Um, here's a letter right here. It says, uh, Brian, I was traveling alongside the Ohio River on the expressway last night, and I saw a barge with probably the brightest light I had ever seen. It lit up everything around it like nobody's business, and I thought to myself, imagine standing in front of it, complete, being completely exposed with it focused directly on you. Now imagine it 100 times brighter and it exposing all your sins throughout your life. It becomes evident that your shame would be so great that it would kill you. <laughs> yeah. How I would ever be able to stand in front of God as a lost person is a frightening thought. To have to stand in front of that light with no cover makes my stomach turn. I'm so glad I have Jesus Christ as my covering. CM is the initials of the last name there. Yeah, absolutely. I'd... It's really a, an amazing thought to think of having to actually, you know, answer for all the sins that you've done as a lost person because you've rejected Jesus Christ. I uh, just, I don't, I don't understand lost people. <laughs> There's nothing in this world that is worth, you know, you going to hell and having to experience that kind of judgment, the great white throne judgment. Um, another one here. Uh, another letter. Dear Mr. Denlinger, um, thank you for the work you do. Your videos are always engaging and your free downloads are helpful. I have benefited from the best KGV and where to buy videos. The PDF download, download about counterfeits was very help or very useful. Also, I've been praying for courage to face my cancer situation. Getting old ain't for sissies, as they say. Your waterproof KJV gave me a much needed belly laugh. This video bolstered me. Maybe I won't be a big fat Frady cat. Thanks again, MW, are the initials of the first and last name. Um, well, I just want to say real quickly, I'm glad that my videos have been a help to you. And I'm, it's nice that, you know, you can get a good laugh out of some of my weird humor that I have. Some people don't get it, but, you know, I'm, I'm always glad to hear people that understand my sense of humor. But as, in terms of the cancer thing, um, well, I'd really recommend getting into to really good nutrition on that. Um, you know, a book that I would recommend, I don't agree with Edward Griffin on everything, but um, World Without Cancer is a good book. And uh, there's definitely a lot of um, things out there that will help fight cancer and give you good strength and good energy. Um, you know, uh, chaga tea, I, I talked about that, black chaga, the mushroom, medicinal mushroom. Um, that stuff is known for fighting cancer and whatever else. Um, there's a lot of nutritional therapies out there. Um, and I, I don't really recommend chemotherapy. Okay, that's some pretty toxic stuff. But uh, I'll put this letter over here and get to the next one. But thank you for your you know, letter there and for the donation as well. I appreciate that. Um, Brian Denlinger, I write this letter to thank you for your ministry. After being raised Catholic and never taking theology seriously, I was convinced by a new group of friends to read actual scripture instead of relying on human tradition. I am grateful to finally truly know Christ. I wanted to ask you two questions in this letter. First, you had a recent video about John MacArthur. I have spent the past few months listening to his New Testament sermons religiously, but, but now seeing his ties to Satanism, are there any other preacher's sermons you would suggest listening to? Well, I would. The biggest problem with John MacArthur is he's not a Bible-believing Christian. Okay, he doesn't believe in any Bible. Um, all translations have errors, and you've got to go back to the Greek and the Hebrew, which those are multiple editions, and it can always be updated and whatever else. Uh, he doesn't have a final authority, uh, except for himself and his own intellect. So, I'd stay away from him. But um, any preacher that's going to use the King James Bible, you're going to get some aspects of truth out of what they say. Uh, I've listened to a lot of different people that I now understand are heretics and whatever else. Um, you just kind of have to wade through the mess of preachers out there and judge them by the book. All right. Um, that's what you have to do. I'm not going to recommend any one particular preacher because they all have errors, including me. Um, I'm not perfect. I have my issues I struggle with and, and I've had to come out and correct things I've said and whatever else. You go back to older videos, you're going to see they contradict my newer videos in some ways. 
Um, one of the things I'll just give you as, as an example, I, I was preaching for a while that the false prophet was going to announce the Antichrist. That's not true. The false prophet shows up after the Antichrist is revealed. Okay, there was a, there was an error. Um, I've I was uh, I said for a while that I don't think the, the rapture issue is a salvation issue. I don't teach that anymore. I do believe that. I used to say the word Trinity. Uh, I don't use the word Trinity anymore. So uh, you know, it's all it's all a learning process out there, and it's not ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's just that God refines even the best preachers out there. Um, He's teaching us all things. So, uh, you know, Peter Ruckman, you're going to learn some good things there. You're going to learn some bad things. Uh, again, I don't agree with him on his stands for church buildings. Um, a lot of his pro-military stuff, I'm not into that either. Uh, there's there's a couple other things. I mean, he uses the it, Ruckman's very very confusing to listen to on the Godhead versus Trinity debate issue. Um, he uses terms for both. Okay, he teaches the correct view on the Godhead, but then he turns around and uses Trinitarian language. So he's very confusing in that area. Um, but, you know, it, I, I guess the biggest standard I would have is if some if you hear some preacher out there and he's starting to use new versions, just no. Uh, King James Bible. But let's continue with the letter. Second, I am mostly spending time reading and researching about the scriptures on my own. I would like to find others who share a love for Scripture. Do you know of any ministries in the Crystal Lake, Illinois area? I am about an hour northwest of Chicago, but finding new, or, but finding true Bible-believing Christians is difficult. Um, again, thank you for your ministry and showing the truth about KJV only and the apostates in the church. God bless. M.M. is the initials of the first and last name. Um, my advice would be to go to kingjamesvideoministries.org, get involved in the forums there, and... There's fellowship finding type of stuff there at that website. I can't take care of all the forum type of stuff or whatever else. So I have a brother that put together a mirror website for my website, kingjamesvideoministries.com. The mirror one is the same thing, but .org, kingjamesvideoministries.org. Okay, go there to that website and you can inquire if anybody there knows about uh, or if they live in that area of Illinois. Okay, that's what I would recommend there. All right, another one here. This is from North Carolina. The initials would be S.A., not Stephen Anderson, people out there. Um, Dear Brian, I have been watching your videos for about a year or so now. I'd like to thank you for your ministry. God has really used you in a mighty way to bless me, and I give God the glory and thank Him for using people like you in your ministry exactly right. Don't give me glory. It's about the Lord. I pray that God will continue to bless you and use you for His glory. I have learned a lot from your ministry and personal Bible study. I'd even dare to say I've learned a lot more than I ever have and have grown in Christ more than through, son, through study and prayer and following your ministry than I ever had from attending church pretty much all my life. I have a few questions I'd like to ask you, and if you could do a video on them, I'd really appreciate it, or if you could write me back, I'd appreciate that too. My first question is, I've been reading Isaiah 27 where Leviathan is referred to, and I wanted to ask you what, who you think Leviathan is. Um, me personally, I think he is the, the devil. I have also read Revelation 12.9, and I think this verse may have something to do with this creature, Leviathan, too. I'd like to know your thoughts um, on this subject. Um, yeah, I believe Leviathan... Uh, there, there could there have actually been a creature, a sort of a dragon type of creature, sea monster. No, I shouldn't say sea monster because then you think fiction, but some kind of a, what people would call dinosaur uh, that lived in the seas and whatever else, um, possibly, possibly. But uh, there's a verse I think it's in um, Job um, where it talks about that Leviathan is a king over all the children of pride. Um, so I think it's a reference to the devil, the devil. and he appears as a, as a great red dragon in Revelation chapter 12. So yeah, I think that it's the devil. I would agree with that. Um, it says here, um, I would also like to ask you how to start go about starting a ministry online on YouTube. I've been called to preach, but I don't really know where to start with the calling. I know it is a very serious calling and that it shouldn't be taken lightly. 
Um, yeah, it is a very serious calling. Um, you know, when you get into ministry, God is going to expect you to have a good work ethic. Um, you can't just be messing around and whatever else. Uh, you know, the Lord expects you to really be fighting the devil hard. And if you don't, um, it's going to be a problem. And the Lord's also going to expect you to clean up a lot of things out of your life. Uh, you know, you can compare it to the military. You know, you can't do certain things if you go into the military. You're giving up some of your personal freedom when you go into the military. They're going to tell you when to get up. They're going to tell you what to eat. They're going to tell you what to dress or how to dress and how to talk and how to everything. Uh, well, it's like that with your service to the Lord, right? Uh, very much so as a Christian, but even more so when you get into ministry. But how do you start a ministry, um, an online ministry, like a YouTube type of thing? Well, you can get a camera and you can just start putting out videos. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Get a camera on a tripod like I have right here. Um, audio recorder, you can do it that way. You can get a webcam for your computer. Um, you can do videos outside. You can, um, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can get a um, screen sharing type of a software like Camtasia Studio where you're actually recording what you're doing on the computer. So if you find websites or whatever else, or if you want to put together studies, scripture studies, and you want to show the scriptures, you can go in there and you can record what you're showing on your computer screen. That's another way to do it. Um, do not monetize your channel, okay? That's a very, very cheap way to gain subscribers and to gain views. Um, you're basically going to be paid by secular people. And there's not one verse of scripture where anybody's ever done that, okay? Uh, going to, I mean, imagine Paul, the Apostle Paul, and he says, uh, yeah, you know, I got to speak down at the uh, local Colosseum there the other week because, uh, well, the Roman government, they pay, you know, they sponsor me. <laughs> uh, no, that would be a little bit wicked. Actually, they'd be very wicked, not just a little bit. Uh, do not monetize your channel. Okay, let the Lord in His timing grow your ministry. Now, that's what I did. It took me over 10 years to get 30,000 subscribers, and I've worked very, very hard that entire time. Um, I don't even know what the number of actual videos I've ever done has been because I've deleted a lot of them and some of them I took down, and, you know, whatever. Um, and But I'd say it's probably pushing 2,000 videos in the last, you know, 10 years or so. So I've worked really, really hard and um, with God's grace and whatever else. I'm not bragging. You understand what I'm saying. You have to work hard if you're going to be in full-time ministry. Um, continuing here, it says, I am young, though. I'm 25 years old, and I have the zeal and want to preach the Word, but I just don't really know where to start. I have preached in a church, and I have a few sermons I have worked on, but I feel like with me being young as I am, uh, people won't take me seriously. I don't know why I feel this way, and maybe the devil trying to mess with me with my confidence, but I would like to ask that you all uh, pray for me. Also, I'm wondering if you have any advice for young men like me that are called to preach, like things you've learned and where to start if we don't know where to start. I've been praying, and I know prayer and patience with the Lord will help with this, but I'd like to know if you have any advice and insight on this also. Um, again, you know, start out just recording some sermons. Just just get in front of the camera and, and just you know, pray and say, Lord, please speak through me and, and help me to say the right things and, and whatever else. And, and you're going to start out slow. You're going to start out with people responding and saying, hey, that was really good. Or what do you mean about this or whatever else? And it'll grow from there. Um, that's how that would start. Uh, as far as um, another way that the thing is going to go is you're going to see people out there are very confused. Uh, they have a lot of questions. And a lot of times people will ask you questions that are just going to stump you and you're, you're going to say, I don't really know. Let me get an answer for you. Well, that's the basis for new studies. Okay. Um, answering people. That's, that's a good way to do it. Uh, thank you in advance for your time and answering my questions. God bless you guys and your ministry. Your brother in Christ, S.A. And he has Galatians 6, 9, KJV. Um, you know, I know it's, it's frustrating sometimes when you, I've talked to a lot of brethren and they'll, they'll try to do a ministry and they'll, they get frustrated because it's, you know, you, you put your time into a video and you get, you know, five people watching it or something like that. 
Um, but you don't want to start out fast, okay? Um, my grandfather was raised on a farm, and he used to always say um, about, you know, horses, he'd say slow and steady wins the race, you know. You don't want a horse that's going to start out really fast and go really quick. You just want to start one that has one that just starts out and makes a good pace and just slowly plods ahead. Um, well, that's how we should be in ministry. Um, don't be too anxious to get a lot of people viewing you and a lot of just skyrocketing views and all this other stuff. That's based on pride, okay? When you want to get a, a million subscribers or something like this, why? I can tell you right now, it you'll see as your ministry grows, it can become quite a headache. Paul wrote about the care of all the churches being upon him and, and things, and that which cometh upon me daily, you know. Um, it wears you out. Because you got so many different situations out there. You're thinking about this person, their marriage is falling apart, and that person over there, their job, they just lost their job, and this one's in the hospital, and I wish I'd go see them, but there's no way. They're half the country away, and this one here has questions about that, and I haven't been able to answer that, and this one here sent me you know, this information I need to get to, and, and, you know, and it just, bleh. why would you want a million subscribers? That's crazy, okay? Um, just, just come out and just start out slow. Uh, start putting out some Bible studies and, and things like that. Look at the comments. Witness back and forth with people. I used to be able to write, you know, I, I remember the one time I answered this guy from India many years ago, and I spent four hours writing that email. Scriptures, and I mean, it was like a book. You know, I wrote to the, you know, little booklet or something I wrote to this guy. And uh, he had all these questions, and I answered his questions from the Scriptures to the best of my ability, you know, and, and um, lost contact with him since then. But, uh, I mean, he was really happy for it. But the point is, um, I miss some of that. Uh, I don't often get to answer letters now because we just get flooded with so much, you know, stuff that comes in. And, and I see people all the time in the comments, you know, don't you answer comments? How am I supposed to? I mean, I'm just one guy. So, um, you know, I would honestly, if, if I could honestly get down to 1,000 real, real true faithful subscribers, 1,000 people that were genuinely saved and Bible-believing and the whole thing, um, I think that'd be great. I think, really think it would be. Uh, but just be patient and uh, just, just put out what the Lord puts on your heart and He'll grow your ministry in His timing. That's my best advice. Don't worry about getting a lot of subscribers. Again, like I was saying, the Lord will, you know, make more people come along and watch the ministry that He gives you as you're able to take it. Okay. Um, this is from uh, another one here. Um, My dear brother in Christ, we do not know each other and I do not do much on the computer, but I was told that you could use YouTube to see... Uh, P.S. Ruckman, Peter Sturgis Ruckman. I went to his church in the 1980s through the 1990s. When looking for his shows, yours came up too. It was very strange to see in your shows so many things the same as if I was looking in my own life. It was the same books, hats, coats, way of cooking, ways of cooking. I cannot explain all of it, but the things you talk of is what has been on my mind. It's like God is talking to me about my life by your life. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, it would be something if you had the time to pray about this and maybe we could talk. Take, uh, Thank you and take care. Yours in God's grace. GW is the name there. Um, P.S. In a straight betwixt two, you know what to do. Always pick Christ. He will be true. Yeah. Again, I appreciate that. And, and you know, again, I need to apologize to people because, you know, um, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess the Lord just wants me to be busy or something because there's just, just when I think I'm getting out from underneath the pile of work that's, that's, you know, in my life, there's just a whole bunch more that gets piled on top of me. And um, really wish that I could take some time to answer people and, and talk with people and things like that. Um, but with the ministry the Lord's given me right now, there's just not much time. And... Um, I think in, at some point in time in the future, I'm not going to be on YouTube anymore. Things will calm back down again, and I can actually talk to people and, and um, you know, uh, maybe even have a house church again. 
we missed that, but the, the Lord's called us to do a video ministry right now where we're talking or answering people's questions, and um, that's what I have to do. That's the calling that He's, he's given me. Um, but thank you for the letter. Uh, and I'll just put this out there. Anybody out there that uh, if you have issues with this ministry, and I know that there's plenty that do, <laughs> If you have issues, then write me a letter and say, I want this letter addressed. You can send it certified so you, know, you can prove that I got it. If I'm not going to answer it, then you can say, oh, look at this. He didn't answer it. If you're one of my enemies out there, write out a letter. Don't make, write out some manuscript or something, you know, 50 pages that I have to answer or something, because I'm not going to be able to do that. But just, you know, be considerate of my time. Um, I do have correspondence with a lot of people. You know, I have construction work and, and everything else that I do. Um, but write me a letter through the mail, send it to me and say, please answer these points and I'll do a video. Okay. I'll put that invitation out there. So, um, just want to thank everybody out there for your support of the ministry. And, uh, <sighs> uh, I'll tell you what, it's just, this world is just so messed up right now. There's, there's so much going on. Um, my word. Uh, a lot more I could say right now, but uh, just another night of just really, really messed up dreams and things, and so my head's a little bit frazzled right now. But, uh, uh, you know, even so, come Lord Jesus. Uh, some of the most relatable words in the entire Bible. <laughs> uh, to just have him say, okay, that's enough. Come up, Heather. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. I <laughs> uh, can't wait. Can't wait to leave. Go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ and be with my true brothers and sisters in Christ. That's really going to be great. Can't wait for that. So again, thanks to everybody out there uh, for your prayers, for your support, and we'll see you in the next video.